07 Citizens Black here, and with the delays we've been experiencing with 318, things have been a little slow on the Star Citizen news front, which is understandable considering that CIG has had well-deserved time off during the holidays. But with any slow time, many of us start to think about the state of things maybe a little too much. And with New Year's having just passed, that is also another reason to sit around and contemplate things and ask big questions like how things are going, am I currently doing something I want to continue into the next year, etc. This could be things like your diet or health. It could also be about things that you put up with that maybe you should rethink, such as those who might be in an abusive or toxic relationship, which could of course be with a person, your job, or maybe even your current most watched game. Now I'm no psychologist, I just play one when the need arises and usually for my kids when I'm trying to help them navigate their social problems, or even at times with my wife when she's having issues with coworkers. I have no real training other than a couple of college credits and some sociology and communication classes. I just like to observe of human nature and so as another year has begun it's always amazing to me to see where people's heads are at and with gamers being such a prolific bunch who is more than happy to share their feelings about a game or the direction of their favorite game it's always amazing to me to see people's lost hope manifest into doom and gloom and usually all but abandoning said game and with star citizen this game is ripe with folks who are let down at least on a yearly basis and with chris roberts dropping a letter from the chairman update on december 3rd 30th, that letter seems to have really pulled at the emotions of many Star Citizen fans, and so this got me thinking. What about this game in particular makes many of us put up with the constant missed deadlines and continuous delays? The question seems simple enough, but is the answer simple? Now before I jump into that, I ask that you please do all of the things that can help a channel grow. You guys know the routine by now. Now there are many psychological diagnoses that a professional could impart onto any number of gamers, ranging from social anxiety to withdrawal or issues with tolerating others. This is not that kind of video that will discuss mental health and gaming. Now if you or someone you care about has a game-related mental health issue, I'd advise you to research some symptoms and seek professional help. Again, that is not me, so please do not seek out my help if you're looking for professional help. I'm just your typical armchair expert when it comes to discussing such topics. Now with that said, there is one psychological element that could be at play here with players who stick around and support a game even though they basically have broken any sort of trust when it comes to meeting deadlines, feature goals, and expectations, and that is called belief perseverance. So basically what belief perseverance is is when people come to believe in something so much that even when faced with overwhelming proof against this belief, they'll continue to believe it. Now an example non-gaming related would be that someone denies smoking can cause cancer, despite overwhelming scientific proof showing that it does. It could be more social and stereotypical, such as believing that white people can't dance or all Asians are great at math and science. It could be more narrow focused, such as believing that your boyfriend who was cheated three times is not currently cheating on you, despite the fact that he has been home late every night this week. Now, if you want an example of belief perseverance within Star Citizen, just go into Reddit or Twitter, and there you're likely to encounter many examples of belief perseverance, especially in replies to the letter from the chairman. You'll have examples on both sides, from those who believe that the game is a scam, and then those who overlook the constant delays and swear that Pyro will make it into the fourth quarter this year, and thus giving belief perseverance toward Chris Roberts' ability to accurately predict timelines. Psst, he usually misses every one. Alright, so now that we know one of the reasons for why we continue to support the game from a psychological standpoint, what can be done to treat this? Now unfortunately, those who are pretty deep into belief perseverance, you or me really cannot change their mind. As I stated before, they have seen the evidence and heard the facts and even witnessed it for themselves. Their way of interpreting the proof is just to double down on it and continue to believe. And in the case of Star Citizen, it's not like it's a cold or something, right? I mean, Chris Roberts isn't asking us to drink from the red pitcher and fall him over a cliff or anything, so there's no harm except for maybe the risk that someone might screw up their bills because they spent too much on a ship sale, right? 
Now we all spend money on frivolous things, so where's the harm in allowing people to just believe what they want to believe? I mean, there could be some risk that a person who exhibits this type of behavior is more than likely to also exhibit it about more serious issues such as cults or stereotypical beliefs or to remain trapped in an abusive relationship. The sad reality though is that for us gamers, almost by definition, many of us can be loners at times, so we might not have a stable person around to give us the type of advice we might need to hear, such as why the hell did you spend $750? $50 on a JPEG when you clearly need to spend that on something else. Sometimes having a voice of reason is a good thing and for many of you, if you feel too ashamed to tell your friends, family, or co-workers that you spent so much on the game, then you probably already know you might have a problem. This video is about answering the question, what makes us put up with the delays, right? Well, money ties directly into that. Now, when someone spends a certain amount of money, that to them feels like it gives them more of a right to care about or feel owed from the game. Then I think that also shifts their expectations and how much they have bought into the belief perseverance and will also usually shift how many broken promises they will accept. What's a lot of money to you? Is it $60, which is what the standard game has costed for years now, or is it more? Is it $100? or maybe 500. Did hitting that $1,000 concierge do it for you? Was that the amount that made you go from passively caring to this being something you might obsess over to the point to where you now need this game to come out? And if for some reason it did not, you would feel a deep sense of loss, which might also trigger more serious mental health issues. The more you as a player slash investor feel you're owed, the more you will likely put up with more delays. You might not like it, but you'll put up with them just the same and usually with little resistance. Many people probably feel helpless when it comes to these delays, and as far as us being able to wave a magic wand or show up at the offices and try to pressure the team to work harder under threat, those are not options that are available to us. Now, as a game is in development, so many things can and will go wrong, and more often than not, we will have bad news after bad news. This phenomenon is not limited to just Star Citizen either, as games have become more advanced and tech-heavy, which is due to gamers demanding more, the time it takes to develop a game has increased exponentially. For true open world games, especially those set in a multiplayer live service world, you should not expect anything less than 10 years, and I honestly think it's probably closer to 12 to 15 going forward from start to finish. Star Citizen is definitely on this path and will continue to be further developed even after it gets into some sort of release state. All we as players can do is to try to make sure that we hold the devs as accountable as we can for the things that they have said they will do, which made us fork over our money. CIG needs to be asked constantly about the things that are missing that people paid for, but yet have not seen in the game, such as some of the bigger concept ships that are still missing, and of course, the multi-system of planets we've been waiting for to travel to. Chris Roberts said that they are attempting something on a scale that has never been done before, and some of that's kind of true, if not hyperbole. Having servers that can do what he he wants them to do with server meshing is something that some games have done to some degree or another, so it's not all completely outside the realm of possibility, but what needs to happen is more transparency and just better judgment calls with delivery dates. Chris Roberts tried to Babe Ruth shot call server meshing last summer, saying we should see it first or second quarter of 2023, and now six months later it's moved up to fourth quarter 2023, and I think it's still way too early to even call that accurately, and in my mind it's probably going to be 2024 at some point. With how crappy his his time estimates are, it's a miracle that the game has any backers, even those who exhibit belief perseverance, but ultimately our belief does not persist because of anything he says or does, but what we experience within the game when things go right, because the one thing that is true is that there is nothing else like it anywhere, and those of us who log in and get dumbfounded by the scope of what's being attempted is the real reason why we put up with the constant delays and blown deadlines. All right, and that's going to do it for this video. Now, the one thing about this video is that even though it's focused on Star Citizen, it could be relevant to any game, really. I want to hear from you guys on your thoughts on why you stick around and what you're looking forward to in 2023, even though, as some have said, it will be a slow year. Tell me why you continue to follow the game and what you love about it, or tell me why you have finally had it with the game. I'd like to hear from you either way. Now, remember to be kind to your fellow gamer. Don't ever let something become too precious and stay positive, citizens. Yes.